Hi, I'm Justin Hall. I'm a fifth year teaching fellow at Western University of Health Sciences. I uh, took five years because I did this teaching fellowship. It added a year um, to my medical education. Um, I was able to teach first and second year students uh, in their osteopathic principles and practice course, um, and then also assist them with learning sort of the essentials of clinical medicine as well. I'm often asked when people finding me, find out that I'm going into emergency medicine that uh, you know people wonder, how are you going to use the principles, the techniques, uh, all the things that you've learned about in your osteopathic medical courses, and as a fellow, how are you going to incorporate that into your emergency medicine specialty? Because it's so fast paced and you see patients so quickly and they're so sick. Um, I think it's sort of twofold, I've found, um, in ways in which I will incorporate. One is the philosophy. So as osteopathic medical students, we learn that, uh, especially um, you know, with, with all of our patients, the whole aspect of the person is what you have to consider when it comes to someone's health. So this isn't just the pathology that's going on. It's what is their home life like? Do they have a good support system? What's their mental um, state? What's their mental health like? You know, how, how have other aspects, their history, um, you know, other things that have impacted them in their lives, how has that brought them to this point in their health? Um, and what are some ways in which you can address this with these people? A lot of times people that are coming through the emergency department are those that don't have a primary care provider. They don't see a doctor on a regular basis. You, the emergency physician, are their primary care. Um, and so you are the only person that they see who will has the opportunity to give them advice on the right foods to eat, the, um, you know, the ways in which they can deal with their stress and with their depression, um, the ways in which they can you know, improve their home life to help them with their health, um, if they have some type of debilitating you know, injury or disease. Um, and, so, and, you, and you're able to send them to the appropriate places, um, the appropriate doctors, the appropriate, uh, you know, uh, areas of medicine that can help them with whatever they have going on. So if you keep that in mind that this just this whole process going on bringing this patient to you at this particular moment, um, you know, you can really have a great effect. Um, and I think they really ingrain that in us as osteopathic medical students. I'm not to say that they don't also incorporate it at, uh, at MD or allopathic institutions, but I just feel like from day one, this is what we're taught and this is what is ingrained in us. And I always have it in the forefront of my mind with every patient I've come across, even as a medical student, um, you know, just to be thinking about those things. And it helps me in the way in which I tailor my plan to each individual patient. I think the way in which I'll incorporate techniques specifically um, is that you know, it is hard when things are moving really quickly and it's a busy time in the ER, you really don't have a lot of time to you know to actually do some of these techniques because they take they take time um, so what i've found is that the fact that i have just spent the last four or five years in very close contact with patients as i do my my techniques my ability to touch and my ability to show compassion through touch is something that i've already been able to use in the emergency department when i go in and see a patient and they're laying on the bed and I lay my hand on their leg or on their shoulder and console them and ask them questions to find out what's going on, you know, I think that's something that not necessarily that, you know, everyone isn't doing that, but it's all, it's just, it's second nature. It just happens. And I think it really, really helps those patients. They really notice that, oh, my doctor cares. Um, he cares enough to even touch me. He's not afraid of, he's not afraid of me or whatever I have going on. Um, as far as techniques, I have found that when things start to slow down a little bit in the department, there's time to do some of the things that we've learned. Um, I can sit down with patients that you know may they, they may have sprained an ankle and you're there to rule out a fracture, and you can while you're talking to them, get in the history. You can sit there and you can manipulate their ankle just slightly in the ways in which we've learned, and you can do some do some techniques we call counter strain specifically to decrease. The, the pain firing in that particular area to decrease that, uh, that pain sensation. And it's really subtle and it's real quick. And it's, you can do it while you're talking to the patient and getting a history. It's the same with simple stretching exercises. We see, we see back pain come through the emergency department over and over and over again. And it is one of those injuries and one of those uh, you know, processes that's just sapping a lot of our healthcare 
um, funds. It's just, it eats up so much with all the medications and all the procedures. It's so simple to give them, give patients good stretching techniques, to give patients, um, you know, just a quick treatment, two or three minutes that might release some of those really tight muscles. And then maybe you don't have to use as strong of a narcotic, you know, to help them out for the next week or so. Maybe you don't need to use a muscle relaxant because you've already relaxed those muscles themselves. And I can tell you that our, some of our techniques take longer and some of them can only be two or three minutes and really that's all you need. And again, you can be talking to your patient at the same time. I've really found that I can actually incorporate in many ways the things that we've learned in osteopathic medicine. And for me personally, I want to have a very dynamic career. So I could see myself in the twilight of my career sort of cutting back on maybe some of my you know, emergency medicine on my feet, go, go, go type shifts and picking up some outpatient stuff at a local clinic, trying to do some of the OMT, um, you know, having more time with my patients, spending a little bit more time um, and using, basically coming back to my roots essentially is how I like to think of it. Um, and I don't know where I'll be in 30 years, but you know, that's kind of how I imagined at this point. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much how I would incorporate it.